Hi, welcome to Odyssey Academy. I'm Stacy Delzite, Manager of Transportation Technical Solutions here at Intersys. Before we get started, I just want to give a little background on why we're showing Odyssey and North Star branded batteries in the presentation today. Back in 2019, Intersys, who's been producing the Odyssey brand battery for nearly 25 years, purchased North Star. The two batteries are very similar, both using a technology called thin plate pure lead. If you aren't familiar with thin plate pure lead technology, our Odyssey Academy trainings will help explain some of the unique features of this product. Our training topic today is battery life. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that everyone always wants to know is how long will my batteries last? Unfortunately, that is a difficult question to answer because it depends on so many factors. After our training, we hope you will understand the main factors that impact battery life. These include depth of discharge, proper recharging, temperature, and in some cases, maintenance. We'll also discuss how battery life is impacted by specific application conditions. Finally, you'll have a chance to get any questions you might have answered. One of the biggest factors that impacts how long a battery will last is called depth of discharge. Depth of discharge is a measure of how much capacity was removed from the battery compared to the battery's rated capacity. For example, if you have a 100 amp hour battery and 25 amp hours were removed, then the depth of discharge is 25%. Some applications, especially ones that use solar charging, can keep track of amp hours removed so you get an accurate depth of discharge from that data. But many applications don't have that ability, so depth of discharge can be approximated by using voltage. On this chart, we're showing the relationship between voltage and depth of discharge for thin plate pure lead batteries. Keep in mind this is open circuit or at rest voltage. For thin plate pure lead batteries to get an accurate open circuit voltage, the battery needs to have been disconnected from the charging source for at least four hours. You can see that an open circuit voltage of 12.6 volts means the battery is about 25% discharged. If you've been to any of our other trainings, you might think this chart looks familiar because we use one, a similar one that shows state of charge rather than depth of discharge. The two charts are opposite of each other. A battery with 12.6 volts is at 25% depth of discharge, but it's also at 75% state of charge. Getting back to what depth of discharge has to do with how long a battery will last. In general, the deeper a battery is discharged, the shorter the battery cycle life will be. So you'll get a shorter cycle life from a battery that is consistently discharged 75% compared to one that is consistently discharged 25%. Continuing on with that concept, here we're showing typical cycle life for various battery types. In the battery world, a cycle is any time a battery is discharged and then fully recharged. When you see these type of cycle life numbers, always keep in mind that they are typical of lab conditions, which means constant temperature around 77 degrees Fahrenheit, perfect charging algorithm, and ideal maintenance for some battery types. Cycle life in the field might be impacted by some of these factors, but the inverse relationship between depth of discharge and number of cycles still exists. So the more you take out of the battery, the less cycles it will provide. You can see from the cycle numbers shown here that we expect thin plate pure lead batteries to last about twice as long as traditional AGM batteries and about three times as long as flooded batteries. One thing to note is that while many battery types are maintenance free, there are flooded batteries which are used in deep cycle applications that require maintenance. For these batteries, every four to six weeks, depending on usage and recharge habits, 
distilled water will need to be added to replenish water that is lost through the vent caps. Not performing this maintenance correctly will have a huge impact on the cycle life for this type battery. I mentioned earlier that proper charging requires using the proper charging algorithm. The algorithm is the program that determines how the battery will be charged. We know that different battery types, flooded, absorbed glass mat, thin plate pure lead, need to be charged differently for the best performance. Because the electrochemical reaction is not 100% efficient, batteries require a certain amount of overcharge to get fully charged. The exact amount of overcharge needed varies by battery type and even by battery manufacturer, but in general, flooded batteries need a lot more overcharge than valve regulated batteries. It's not unusual for a manufacturer to specify that a flooded battery needs 110 to 115% overcharge, while our thin plate pure lead batteries only need about 104% overcharge. This difference means that using a charge algorithm designed for a flooded battery would severely overcharge a thin plate pure lead battery and cause it to dry out and fail. The opposite is also true. Using an algorithm for a thin plate pure lead battery to charge a flooded battery would undercharge it. Undercharging means that all of the sulfate doesn't go back into solution. That reaction is not completely reversed. Undercharging results in what we call operating at a partial state of charge. It's never ideal to operate at a partial state of charge, but some battery types can tolerate it better than others. Thin plate pure lead batteries have very low internal resistance. The low internal resistance makes thin plate pure lead batteries perform better than other battery types when they can't be fully recharged after each use. To properly charge our thin plate pure lead batteries, using a charge algorithm for thin plate pure lead is ideal. However, an algorithm for absorbed glass mat batteries is the second choice. In both cases, temperature compensation is recommended. This is also a good time to mention that since each battery type requires a different charge algorithm, it's never a good idea to mix battery types in the same application. That might seem obvious, but, but we get a lot of questions about it. Let's say you have a system with more than one absorbed glass mat battery in it, one of the batteries fails, and you happen to have a spare flooded battery that would fit. It's not a good idea to put the flooded battery in there because both batteries can't be properly charged using the same charging system. In many cases, we can't do much about the temperature, but it still has a big impact on battery life. The fact is, heat is the enemy of battery life. Remember, batteries are electrochemical devices and heat accelerates the conditions that naturally happen inside the battery. We're talking about grid corrosion, positive grid growth, and electrolyte dry out. As I mentioned earlier, most cycle life data assumes laboratory conditions with a temperature around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The general rule of thumb is that for every 18 degrees increase above 77 degrees Fahrenheit, cycle life is reduced by half. That's why we don't expect batteries to last as long in places like Arizona or Dubai compared to cooler climates like Canada or Maine. In addition to reducing expected cycle life, high temperatures also increase the rate of self-discharge. We haven't touched on it in this training, but all batteries self-discharge over time. This means their voltage decreases, even if they're just sitting on a shelf, not supporting any type of load. It's best for batteries to stay above a 50% state of charge when they're being stored. That means about 12.2 volts for thin plate pure lead batteries. In high temperatures, especially with some flooded batteries, you may need to recharge the batteries every few months to stay above 50% state of charge. We've been talking about high temperatures, but what about low temperatures? 
you might think that low temperatures increase cycle life since high temperatures decrease it. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but low temperatures do impact battery performance by decreasing available capacity. Just like cycle life data, battery capacity rates are stated at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures below 77 degrees decrease capacity to some degree. On our chart here, we're showing that how, how the capacity is reduced. Assuming this is a 100 amp hour battery, at 32 degrees, a flooded battery could provide 68 amp hours, an absorbed glass mat battery could provide 73 amp hours, and a thin plate pure lead battery could provide 88 amp hours. When it comes to choosing the best battery for an application, several factors should be considered. We won't be able to touch on all of them at this point, but just wanted to point out a few factors that impact nearly every application. Storage temperatures have a large effect on the rate of self-discharge in batteries. It's always best to store batteries in cool, dry places, but it's not always possible. We've already mentioned that when batteries must be stored, voltage should be monitored so the batteries stay above 50% state of charge, recharging as needed. Comparing the rates of self-discharge of flooded, absorbed glass mat and thin plate pure lead batteries, we see that the rate is highest in flooded batteries, lowest in thin plate pure lead batteries, with absorbed glass mat batteries being in between the two. Generally, with our thin plate pure lead batteries, they can be stored for about two years at 77 degrees Fahrenheit without needing to be recharged. In terms of operating temperatures, we already mentioned how low temperatures result in a loss of available capacity for all batteries. Remember that capacity ratings are based on 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and there is some loss of capacity at temperatures below that. The loss has the greatest impact on flooded batteries and the least impact on thin plate pure lead batteries, with absorbed glass mat being in between the two. Lastly, we'll look at shock and vibration concerns. Some applications just require a more rugged battery than others. Think about a battery that's being used in an off-road vehicle compared to one that's being used for a backup power supply. Completely different in terms of needing to withstand shock and vibration. One of the things that vibration can do is cause active material to shed off the plates in the battery. When this material falls off, it's no longer part of the electrochemical reaction and the battery loses capacity. Battery designs with high compression help with this. Thin plate pure lead and absorbed glass mat batteries are built with higher compression than flooded batteries, which generally aren't compressed at all. The material used for plastic components, the case and cover of the battery, can also help in this area. Many of our thin plate pure lead batteries use polycarbonate plastic components, which are very strong and rugged. It helps maintain the battery's compression and also increases the operating temperature range up to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. As we reach the end of our training today, I just want to emphasize a few points we've made related to battery life. In order to have the best life and performance, batteries need to be recharged correctly. Even though we can't always do anything about it, heat reduces battery life. And then the more capacity that is removed from a battery, the shorter its life will be. We call that depth of discharge. We saw in the cycle life numbers that thin plate pure lead batteries last about three times longer than flooded batteries and two times longer than traditional AGM batteries at various depths of discharge. But thin plate pure lead batteries will last longer at 20% depth of discharge compared to 50% depth of discharge. Regardless of battery type, there's always an inverse relationship between depth of discharge and cycle life. 
We want to thank you for attending our training on battery life today. We plan to do more of these training sessions in the future, so stay tuned for additional topics that we're going to cover. If you have questions that weren't answered today, feel free to email me at stacy.delzite at intersys.com or you can call our technical support group at 1-800-964-2837. Thanks.